Um, everyone see my screen, right? Yep. Sharing, okay. Today is huge. I mean, uh -huh. I don't think it's here. Yeah. What you're going to show is, is amazing. I'm not building up anything here, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, um, when you start up M Driven Designer and you need, um, uh, you want to get uh, going, of course, to um, develop uh, things and test things out. And there has uh, been a a bit of a hurdle setting up the servers to, to actually get going. Of course, you have the, the model and you can press play and you can do the local turnkey prototyper um, or the VPF uh, application to test things out. But the local prototyper is sort of limited because you don't have the, the full database. And uh, if you don't have the full database, you also don't have the things that M-driven server offers, like server-side actions and uh, doing things uh, periodically, like we do with those. And, and that's really an important part to get the full system running. And um, so, so that was one of uh, the issues. How to could we? How could we get the? Uh, you going faster without needing to sign up anywhere, without needing an Azure account or without needing to install information server and SQL server on your machine, etc. So, so there is a, a lot of uh, hurdles that we want to uh, we want to lower the bar to get going. And uh, we also know that Microsoft is uh, pushing uh, .NET Core really hard and uh, as of next year in November, .NET 5 will ship and .NET 5 is basically .NET Core 4 and replaces the .NET framework more or less completely. <clears throat> so uh, it's a good uh, approach to start with .NET Core 3.1, which is the latest for .NET Core currently. So we, we did that with the, the turnkey server, but we haven't done it for the M-driven server. So what we are doing, uh, what we have been, what we have done during the autumn now is to rewrite the UI for M-driven server to, um, to move away from all the really old stuff that uh, were in there like ASP um, prior to MVC. So we moved that up to MVC technology. And then what we have done now is also moved it into .NET Core. So, and that gives us some cool features that, um, of course, we could access our servers if we have them on, on portal just by logging in. Uh, but that has that requires that I have done something before. So we added this button, local servers. Um, so the idea is to um, push that one and we get a new uh, functionality up where we can simply download the the latest um, .NET Core versions of both M-driven server and M-driven turnkey. So this is a bit uh, rough and we're just testing it out, but uh, we think it will look something like this. So the first step is to actually um, make the download uh, from our server to, to your local machine. And uh, we have done these uh, softwares as uh, what, what we call, uh, what is called uh, standalone. So they include the full .NET framework each. So they are semi big, but uh, that's not really important. I think uh, the important is functionality and we, we want to have as few extra steps as possible. So 
So this is uh, what's needed to, to get them running without uh, a lot of hassle. So now we have them locally. And uh, once we have this, the um, installations locally, we can instantiate servers from them. And uh, basically what you would do is to add a new um, server pair. We can call this demo. And then I will... Oh, yes. Sorry, can I... So what it says there is basically server pair 5, is it? Yeah, so so what I mean with server pair is that um, it's one M-driven server and one turnkey server. So if, if we would to look at uh, some of these that I have installed prior to, to this uh, meeting, I, I will have a file path here, here. And the file path, if I open that up, Everything ends up in documents and there's a new folder M driven servers. And here are the downloaded installs that landed here and was refreshed when I push, push this button. So these are the zip files that were downloaded just now, 711. Just like the shop. Um, and uh, this one that uh, there's a separate folder for for each once i do the install so if i do the install of this one there's a folder created for me here and two subfolders within one for the m driven server and m for the and one for the turnkey server and these of course then just pack up the um, the zip files, that's it here. So once we have done that, I recently, um, recently I mean really recently, just like five minutes ago, discovered that there's something that locks the, um, after I do this refresh install, um, this window doesn't seem to, to let go of the file lock, so it can be hard to start it without uh, closing M driven design and re restart it. But if I go on the other one, M driven server 4, it has been assigned to port numbers. And uh, if I press start servers, those servers will be kickstarted like this. So this is the path, and it listens on port 5008, and this one listens on port 5009. And also notice this is HTTPS and this is HTTP currently. Um, we're gonna sort that out going forward, I think, but um, could be good to notice that at this point. So now the servers run and that's great, but now I want to use them. So, <clears throat> I could use this button and it will copy the the M driven servers address into this dialog so so it's all set up for me but um, I can follow the link to try and open this up so this is my local M driven server and it will be good to know that uh, we have written stuff here uh, on the wiki uh, and it will say somewhere here what the password etc is for for this default setup because now everything is done automatically so if I were to log in here with user a and password one two three four five six I have an NM driven server here and uh, let's try to see this new one I created. I, I said that it could be problematic to start it because there's a file lock here and I think that's the case. We're going to fix that but we can just verify that uh, it's correct. Yeah, 
So this is what happens. So if you see this, this is probably due to the file lock. Um, so I'm going to do like this. Save that. And then I can just restart it. That would release the file lock, I believe. So the server 5 demo, I will try to start those and now they are we're fine. The first time, because this is a brand new server, so the first time there's actually no database and, and what the end driven server does is discovers there's, there was no local database and it copies the, um, from the the template database and then it discovered that the template database had an older version of uh, um, the meta model for running m driven service so, so it evolved that one for us so that's good now i can just log in with a one two three four five six um, and if i were to check here I can see there are no models available in this server as of yet. If I were to go to the turnkey server that's connected to this M-driven server, uh, it would get uh, it wouldn't really work because there's this isn't started. It's uh, uh, it has some nothing to run, so it would look, look like this. Not very nice. We will probably fix that so it will be a better message, but that's what it looks like now. So what I want to do is use this address, port 510, uh, from this dialog here. Then. And that is what this uh, button does. Use in cloud form and close. So it will close this. And uh, Nothing happened here, but you can see here it says HTTPS localhost 510. So that's connected correctly and these values are filled in. So I can check the server status and it says current state started, no current version. And I can upload the model and then it says, okay, that was the first model. So the database is recreated. And if I were to check here, there's a uh, a database uh, version running there. Good. And if I were to refresh this, it would then discover that there is a, a model available and run that. Let's see, let's make it a little bit bigger. So, no. Um, and uh, of course, there's no data so let's put some data in there and save that and everything works as we expect this is the ui for this then and uh, if i um, make changes here like adding some attributes and want them to show up on my view this and I save that just saving will not have any effect on this uh, it will still look the same I have to work as if I'm working towards real servers I need to uh, have the cloud dialogue and say that I want to upload the model and when the model is uploaded to the M-driven server, it discovers that uh, the model is changed, discovers the changes and evolves it. And <clears throat> after that, when I go here, the turnkey server will discover there's a new model version 
and it will reload this and, and render the new UI for this. Let's see. Yeah. And now everything is uh, as you expect to save state, etc. So the database is fully available. Um, and uh, if we were to look in the M-driven server, that has some functionality to, as we have looked at before, to to find data. So what was it we created? It was this uh, an object of class thing. So if we were to search that, we would see our thing over here and attribute one and two that was added there. And one thing I thought of that we talked um, just as the meeting started, me and Daniel, about uh, the, the SQL that's generated. There is a function in M-driven server that uh, can be handy because once in a while you need to figure out how to put this exact same question in SQL that you do in OCL. So. Um, this tool here um, makes it possible to, to write uh, any type of uh, OCL PS expression. And uh, uh, of course, you can do that from the debugger as well uh, in M driven designer. But uh, what's uh, different here is that you don't need to start anything, it's straight from the, the web. So let's see if I write thing all instances and press execute it also reveals exact the exact uh, sequel that uh, mdriven constructs from from this uh, ocl um, expression and this might be good uh, certainly when there's a lot of navigation and following a lot of uh, um, associations it can be quite hairy to figure out how to uh, put forward the correct sql to to debug something and here also we see uh, the typical a0 underscore prefix that is added to tables if they are stored in the um, local database the small sql compact database of course uh, you can just as well if you have a sql server locally or uh, wherever in your network and you have a, a connection string you can of course um, pause the app and switch to a full sql server and enter the connection string for that to um, to make it uh, more production-like. Start. No, no, that was wrong. Like that. So, um, and that's pretty much it. How? Um, what? what the new thing that I, I wanted to show and, and what it let's have a discussion of, about that but the, the the aim is to be self-contained so that you can stay on on one development machine and um, easily update the server versions without uh, needing to ask anyone else or uh, be granted some access and um, I think it's uh, a big step forward in, in uh, making it easy to verify your app completely um, on a local development machine. Let's hear from uh, Hendrik Törnvald. What, what do you think? Do you, could it be usable for your, your situation on finance? Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, we get a lot of new uh, 
like needs and ideas that we would like to like proof of concept out in a way that um, I think this can be usable for uh, for like the f- uh, first meeting with uh, mm. with this. Um, but then of course uh, some meetings after that you would uh, like them to to try the solution them themselves and then you of course need um, a server uh, yeah correct but... so in order to allow others to consume your app you you need to be on a public network address somehow yeah but for like initial ideas just to to show something uh, to prototype with uh, it would be very interesting to try it out Mm. yeah i think so Mm. oh lars i have a question I thought this was it yesterday the first time. Mm. Uh, I have a question, and and that could you show us how does it look in the folders? Can I just put resources and stuff straight into my Turnkey server and like edit HTML pages and static pages and everything and just refresh? And then it's like the clothes that the the loop even more. I mean, you have it basically with a local prototyper, but here you would have a full server and you would have every access to the file system. And if you, I guess if you make code grass, does it mm. work? Yeah. Um, so in theory, it will work, but we have had this issue with the, the runtime environments being different for full, full uh, .NET framework for Point 0.8 or what it is, and uh, the .NET um, standard 2.1. That's uh, .NET Core 3.1 is built upon. <laughs> so, but um, if you want to do code dress, you should just do a, a .NET standard library uh, to make it work with the, the .NET Core variants and this uh, this confusion will go away once uh, we only have the 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 new kind of framework that dotnet core represent but there's still an, an issue with the so so you could of course do a, a project that compiles both uh, use the same code and compile two variants but you need to make sure to to keep them apart you said .NET standard is what I should compile for this. Yeah, is so so the compile? it works. Um, the .NET Core is so the the core thing is everything with the UI and web and stuff like that. The standard is the low level, um, fully compliant things in the bottom so network and and uh, mm-hmm. everything like that so so if you do a project with .NET core it will also load in the core uh, variants but it doesn't have to be core it would be enough with .NET standard 2.1 2, 2.0 2.1 is .NET standard currently. That's the latest version of .NET standard. So I think it's super confusing all these uh, versions, but... Uh... Yeah. All right, so so another question, um, well, related. So does that mean that I can like have these two running now locally and then I can start my Visual Studio and connect to them and then do stuff in Visual Studio in the designer and send it locally to my local M-driven server. And so that I have the full stack kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. So, th- so that would uh, work just the same. Mm. Um, and th- then, then I, then, you know, <laughs> this is like Christmas. So I have to. It's, open it's Christmas up. in two weeks. Like, yeah. <laughs> 
let me open another package here then. So does that also mean that I could do, uh, yeah, so if you, if you um, I can, I don't need the, the designer really to start this, right? Because it's also available inside. If I install the framework in Visual Studio, yeah. I have the same buttons and everything there, right? Yes. So And, and so, yes, I also just go to the command line and start my servers. Yeah, you can. Um, we will probably need to write something about that because um, there's... And I know a, I'm... You know, I'm opening too many packages too quickly now, and my mother would say hands off. But yeah. so if I sort this, there's a lot of stuff because most of the stuff is from the .NET framework, um, and then our stuff comes down here. Uh, but if you sort this on type, you will find there's only one application, and if you click start that application, it it defaults to a, a path because we haven't given it one on the command line that's doable and we need to document how to do that but if i copy that uh, url and go to a, a browser oh maybe i started that was the yeah so and uh, yeah how is the um, the the turnkey server connected? How does it know which M-driven server to talk to? Good question. That's in app data and the M-driven server override. It will look in this file to find out where to go for the for its M-driven server. Oh no shouldn't open with that one that's but this is the same as it is yeah uh, mm. right now yeah so that has always been possible to to do that and i'm gonna open it with no uh, means all the, the the documentation is the same as 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 before yeah but it also means and if I, I click 10 times on on that exe i'll have like 10 web servers running and yes. uh, try out how how it scales and, and things like that and yeah try action between different users and being logged in and different users and everything so yes so it, yes that's it cool. opens up a, so, so you need to start it with different ports but uh, once you do that uh, you can have multiple mm -hmm. yes um and uh, yeah so I think it's a, a, a really lightweight. Uh, the, the stack just got more uh, compact and easily accessible and uh, movable and with less uh, running cost, so to speak. Because once I'm here, These servers are uh, like global for my machine because all this data, which service I have, is actually done with a small M-driven model that uses XML persistence and the data is in this file, in documents M-driven service, next to the installs. So if I were to remove this file, uh, the knowledge of uh, what service I have, uh, the data for the ports, etc., would be gone. But uh, so that's just a normal M-driven persistence file. But correct me if I'm wrong. I think I mean you can install a. a, a a better SQL Server for free from Microsoft, yes, right? Than yes, yes. Uh, so you can use the develop SQL Server developer, which is the full SQL Server, uh, but you're uh, contractual bound to not use it uh, for, for multiple users, etc. But it's fully functional. 
and uh, so, so that's uh, I really recommend you to to do that because there are a few things that SQL Compact won't do. Um, that's good. Um, yeah. Uh, well, my 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 main objection to this the, the built-in Compact database is that you cannot just easily start a manage, SQL Server Management Studio mm. and get a good look and be able to query and, and look into how the data is stored or, you know, like if you if you need to work on indexes and, and making backups and concurrent access. So there's a lot of features that are good to have with a local SQL instance that is not that readily available when you use the Azure cloud service. Mm. Well, let's not forget SQL Server Express, which is free and can be used yeah. for production. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah, it's it's yeah. also a good alternative. Absolutely. Uh, I was just m m thinking of the, the ability to to to, uh, to log on and see what is going on in the, in the SQL Server. Not that it's needed very often, but when you need it, it is kind of annoying that that it's a bit locked into the built-in server. Mm. Um, and also the built-in server has a, a limit on four, uh, four plus gig gigabytes in storage. So if you um, try to push all the pictures in the article master database, you end up with a full database and everything locks up, like we did last week. Yeah, uh, SQL Server Express allows 10 gigabytes nowadays, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So... And then, oh, and like uh, he's holding up his hand, but... Oh, your microphone is really lousy. <coughs> Maybe you should write your question if it if you don't find a anyone else want to say something? Yeah, yeah. I, have, I have more questions. Mm. Because this would also basically open up for a different kind of scalability cloud-wise. And because this is the first step, I feel, that, that, that shows uh, how, how you can uh, put everything in one container. So that would make, for example, the turnkey servers much more easily to run on, on Amazon Web Services or, or the container services offered by Microsoft, uh, so that you can uh, eat more easily spin up more and more machines. You can do that today too with web apps, mm. but I think yeah, the Kubernetes and things like that. Mm. definitely. So I don't think we're ready for uh, like production quality for for the turnkey as of yet for the turnkey core, but uh, it will definitely come. Henrik, uh, had you no, you wrote something in your no, no, no. Now I changed the microphone. Right, much better. <laughs> uh, so on the other hand, would a business user be able to install this now without? Because that's a common problem that you need to involve the IT department to mm -hmm. get started. So uh, there's a, a couple of hurdles. There might be an issue with downloading the the Click Once application uh, because uh, we we still don't don't have a a good uh, um certificate on on the click once and we should probably buy an ev certificate to to circumvent the um, the, the lock screen uh, but uh, besides that um, this is more or less just x copy installs well not more or less it's exactly x copy install so there's no admin rights needed there is one thing, though, that we ran into when we tried it out at your machine yesterday, and that's the the localhost SSL certificate. Uh, that might 
need um, some work to, to get running. We're going to document how to to do that. If you have installed like Visual Studio and and, and the .NET uh, Core SDK, you will have that. But possibly you won't be allowed as a business user to install the, the .NET SDK. I'm not sure. So okay. um, we need to figure that one out as well. But hopefully it's um, something that we will be able to find ways around so that you could be on a totally locked down computer and uh, maybe just uh, have a USB stick with everything on it and and then you go. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And of course, when, if you um, work like this, you will end up with some data that's stuck in the, in the local servers and you want to move that to production once you are ready for that. Or even when you're starting with a compact database and then switching to a SQL server, you want to move your data. And uh, that's functionality that has been available for quite a while, but uh, we might not have talked about it. So if you want to know more about that, we could have a session on that. But basically there's a thing under the, the prototyper, uh, which is um, once you start something up, uh, like uh, I'm gonna, now this one doesn't know which server I'm talking about because this hasn't, updated now it does so i can start the debugger against this local and uh, there's a button over here called migrate and what migrate does is it can download um, the data in an xml format and then once you have it in xml you can um you can read it into another um, server. And this, of course, removes all the issues with the tables not uh, being named exactly the same in the compact as on SQL Server and things like that. So there are ways to, to migrate the, the data from different environments. I have a question. So now you're able to take the error log file, so you can have a console window with the showing the error log. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the I... the error logs uh, for Turnkey server and for um, M driven server, so for they are also um, available. For M driven service, the they are system. available like this. Oh, I think uh, from from, uh, from the, the file system. From disk, yeah. Mm. Yes. So if we were to look uh, in this one on the M driven turnkey, there will be a. Maybe it hasn't produced any log, but. Uh, Let's go to the M driven server that has produced some log and it shows. So I can have a console window tailing that file, those files. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. And maybe that would be a good uh, thing to sort of add yeah. functionality from. from within to, to be able to see what's happening on the servers. I'm not sure. Hmm. Yeah. So you don't even need a portal account to no, run so, the so server? No, so this is uh, account free. Okay, so it's like a free tire. Hmm. And that, that's good because um, then we can um, you only consume your 
own resources here. So you're free to to have as many of these as you see fit, as much disk space you can. Um, Um, spare and they will all get their own unique ports so that's uh, and if you have a lot of different versions of the same model and that's uh, one way to use it but more likely you have a lot of different models and and different projects that you work on in parallel So uh, as I see, um, uh, Alexandra is online as well, Alex. So what we are doing for the, the Colton Tech project, that would be a, a good fit for you to have uh, this kind of total local, totally local approach to set things up while you work with the uh, the styling, etc. Yeah, yeah, that's much helpful. Mm. Thank you. And it means, right, that as I said before, that you could then um, um, just edit the files directly in the folder. Yes, but this works just as um, um, the the normal servers. It works with the assets TK etc so so they will be mirrored and uh, as long as you know what you're doing and don't get confused if the server overwrites something that it uh, because it restarts and packs up the model and uh, things like that so uh, it's um, definitely possible mm. yeah to to um, and also, as you have shown before, to work with the um, the rewrites on URL re rewrites in the browser. Okay. Yeah, the resource override. Yes. yes. Yeah, you should you should keep your if you have a project, try to keep it inside the Visual Studio project and upload to the to them driven server the whole model to to not get. Um, confused about the right versions of things. I'm just thinking that sometimes we developers, we want this shortcut that that that, that is super fast for this specific trying that you're doing. You're trying back and forth and, and even a 30 second delay on, 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 on each round trip is annoying. Yeah. You can go into the fast lane and, and do things like that. Yeah. Mm. And of course, this is showing uh, the M-driven server and the turnkey, but you don't need to, you can hook up uh, any type of client to the M-driven server and talk straight to that with persistence mapping. So th this is uh, the preferred way, I, I should say, um, to, to use uh, the persistence mapping technology. This way you don't, necessarily need to to write a service or make that run on IIS or standalone you can just plug in the the m driven server and and what the m driven server does beyond being just uh, the the friendly over mapper is the periodic actions and the automatic uh, evolving etc so and also with CodeRes, you can get any kind of code to run on the server-side jobs. So, and now with the new patterns with the SUSE sync ticket that we have documented on the wiki, etc., it's super easy to to make compact ways to do things asynchronally on, on the server, like assigning numbers or, or uh, driving a workflow. And it plays well with, with the um real-time attributes that we added during this autumn to to trigger things quickly back in the client when things change on the server 
So it's all coming together and, and it's also good to see that switching to, to .NET Core is actually quite a big step um, from a technological standpoint. There's quite a lot of changes that, uh, that impacts things and if you had written a, a complete project with .NET full framework it's not necessarily worth it to port it to .NET Core immediately. But this way, um, everyone that runs MDriven get access to to running their application in in new modernity, so to speak. So uh, that's just one of the benefits that we have talked o- about for a long, long time that uh, manifests in in this way. Um, it also means, I guess, this that you could have as you showed, you can create many servers. So if you have like a backend server with one model, and then you want to try out, for example, how a smaller model in a front end device would look like, mm. you can then have like one set of servers running the full model and one another set of servers running that and using REST API calls in between. And you can also easily like just refresh the debugger and look at like API calling in between them. Yes. And now also that we are fully uh, much, much better compiled on the .NET Core stack. Um, I would uh, argue that you can do uh, native apps with the uh, Samarin and get things uh, uh, rolling with local persistence like uh, CQ Lite on an Android device, etc. And of course, if you want to sync that data up, then then you're back into a, a, a business decision. What data should be synced at what time? But uh, the things that uh, are in place for pushing um, chunks of JSON back and forth, matching it to view models with the, the Tyson technology, uh, that would be um, quite easy to to get going and and uh, f uh, looking ahead at what microsoft is doing ui wise .NET core has always been about uh, the web primarily but now it's also available for vpf and windows forms and that's sort of something they have to do since they are scrapping the full .NET framework and uh, but but those technologies aren't uh, portable to Linux and and uh, Mac uh, Macintosh Mac OS Apple, um, so what they are saying now is they have a new strategy that they called Maui 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 UI. which is a multi-platform user interface. So they have always been quite clear that this is not something we're going to do. We're not, we're not going to support a multi-platform user interface. That's not for us to do. And they have said that uh, time and time again. And now all of a sudden they are um, doing it. And this is actually based on SAML, but based on the summary in the strategy for, for SAML. So that will be a good uh, additional um, UI front-end modernity to, to uh, implement for M-driven to make it possible to uh, run M-driven fat client applications on, on Apple, etc. So that's coming. And, and when you say fat, you you mean basically uh, what's the, the the phone word for fat client? That, that uh, nat- native. Native. App. Yeah, native. Yeah, native. App. So having the 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 whole stack in 
in the application, so to speak. And of course, uh, why should you have the whole stack in the application? Well, it's the only way to get fully um, offline capabilities uh, to be able to edit and uh, update data when you have turned Wi-Fi and, and network off. And that might be needed for some use cases, like uh, we had uh, talked to Anders and uh, he's doing stuff for uh, builders and and when they built the the room where they take the X-rays at Karolinska uh, Hospital, they could absolutely get no wif, uh, Wi-Fi signal to go through the concrete walls with that was X-ray proofed, and I believe. Well, that's a Faraday case, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. So we have used up our time. And thank you very much for um, showing up tonight. And uh, happy, what do you say? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. I was going to say the other way around. Like in, uh, there's a movie I've Merry seen. That. Yeah, happy new year. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Well, oh, okay. I am. Yeah. And then I will put up uh, uh, a new uh, appointment meet for for next year. Great, Got it. Great yeah. Christmas present, Hans. Thank you for for the efforts. You have been a little bit in hiding with this. Yeah. Just, so so it was a, a, a slow moving bullet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Talk to you Bye. next year. I'll yeah. say you bye. 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 Mm -hmm. bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a nice holidays. Bye. Yeah, you too. Bye. 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 bye.